And this is how it works. Those people who are given the scripture, those people who are given the book, they are considered the representatives of Allah. They represent Allah. And if the people who are supposed to represent Allah, if they misrepresent, then Allah's punishment comes on these people. And this is, by the way, is the case of Muslims today. Muslims have resorted to same mentality that we are the chosen ones of Allah. Allah will never punish us. And we have somehow preference over all other people. Despite all the disobedience that we are committing, despite all the violations that we are, uh, that we are uh, making against the book of Allah, against the teachings of the Prophet wasallam, This is why we see Muslims suffering in every corner of the world. You pick any country, whether it is Pakistan or Iraq or Afghanistan or Iran or uh, other Middle Eastern countries or Asian countries, Muslims are suffering. And it is, a, it is a warning from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you were supposed to represent me. You were supposed to bring justice. You were supposed to establish law and order. You were supposed to uh, stand against oppression, against tyranny, against all kinds of injustice, against all kinds of corruption. And here you are the ones who are ahead of everyone in corruption. You are the ones who are ahead of everyone in cheating, in, uh, in fraud, in, uh, in injustice, in all other crimes. You open the book of any, any Muslim country, you find the people from top to bottom are involved in taking bribes from top to bottom i heard from one of the brothers from egypt this person who was just taken out husni mubarak he was the leader of all those people taking bribes someone went to him and complained said you know all your officers they are they are demanding bribes isn't that haram bribe is forbidden in islam Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said قال, That the one who gives bribes and the one who takes bribe Both are going to be in hellfire So he reminded him And normally a person who believes in Allah Who believes in the powers of Allah Who fears Allah Would immediately surrender and will say I will do something Instead, the response that came from this, pres this former president was this. Why don't you call it sadaqah? Instead of calling it rishwa, instead of calling it bribe, why don't you give it a sadaqah? That okay, this is sadaqah for you. So this is, the, this is what, this was the understanding of this person. This was the mentality of this person. And he is not alone. Sadly. He's not alone. There are not hundred thousands of others who have the same kind of mentality. You remind them to fear Allah, they will justify it, their wrongdoing by presenting uh, some uh, by presenting some justification. You try to you try to correct them. But instead of accepting the criticism, instead of trying to correct themselves, they will present a justification for their wrongdoing. That, oh, it was not even a wrongdoing. What I'm doing is absolutely fine, is absolutely correct. And this is why Allah's punishment is, being, is, uh, is seen on Muslim, in Muslim countries. Some, sometimes that punishment is from within and sometimes it is from outside. But it is a warning. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning people that you are supposed to represent the law of Allah on this earth. You are supposed to be the vicegerent and deputy of Allah on the surface of this earth. You are supposed to establish justice, fairness, law and order, peace, and equality, and all other good qualities. But instead, we have been preaching for the opposite. And because of that, we are suffering. The day Muslims decide to return to the book of Allah, return to the teaching of the Prophet Wasallam, Allah's mercy will descend and Allah's blessings will accompany them. It is going to happen until, until our wrongdoing is going to continue. Whether we do it in, in one part of the world or in another part of the world. We are basically misrepresenting Allah. We are misrepresenting the book of Allah. There is no place on the surface, surface of this earth which we can present with proud that this is what, this is what Islam teaches us. If you want to see what Muslims are, if you want to see how Muslims act like, go to that place and you will see. Those are the Muslims. Though, those are the ones who have learned from Quran. Those are the ones who are following the life of the Prophet ﷺ. There's no place on the surface of this earth which can be presented as a role model. Here at least we can present, you know, for example, America as the role model in, for example, maintaining cleanliness. The roads are clean. The bathrooms will be clean. And the public places will be clean. And people stay in order. You go to a Muslim country, the public places will be most dirty. People will be throwing gum here. People will be those people who eat pan, <laughs> they will be, you know, spinning, spinning up pan here and there. They don't care. You remind them, brother, this is wrong. You're, you're littering. And they will be like, do you own this land? Who does this belong to? The road is a public road. So all of us have the right to litter. They don't think the other way. That all of us have the, the responsibility to keep it clean. After all, isn't that what Islam teaches us? Doesn't Islam say that cleanliness is half of our iman? Purity is half of our iman? But where is that half of iman in our Muslim countries? Aren't we missing that half of Iman in our own Muslim countries? And in order to see that half of Iman, we have to come to America? Because here at least we have that half. And the other, the other part comes later. So Abdullah bin Salam radiallahu anh said that Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam is considered the enemy of uh, Yahud uh, from all the angels by their belief but it, the, the reality is Jibreel alayhi salam is the greatest angel among the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the chief of all angels and his rank is the highest rank among all angels all other angels they are after the rank of Jibreel alayhi salatu was salam. The, the next one is the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, which is a very lengthy hadith. And that hadith is the hadith of Isra or the hadith of Mi'raj. The ascension of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam when he traveled from this world to the heavens. We can 
uh, start a uh, little bit inshallah and